before we talk about your party conference, I just want to um, briefly get your take on obviously today's big story, the gas prices um, and potential food, well, definite food shortages, potential uh, problems in hospitals. The government is stressing to reassurance that you know, not, nothing to see, it's all going to be fine. What's your take of it and what would you want to see them do? Well, households are being hit with a perfect storm right now. We've got petrol prices at our highest for eight years. We've got rising fuel prices now. Uh, we have a universal credit cut coming in for six million of the poorest families. And we've got a national insurance rise and freezes in the personal allowance. So it's all coming together as a perfect storm for families on the cost of living. But these gas prices are not the fault of the government. They're, they're the fault of Gazprom, uh, you know, the, the, the Russian organisation, the Russian company. The gas prices are part of the international market. Of course, that's right. But many of the other things I've mentioned are added to the pressure on family budgets. On the gas prices specifically, the government needs to do two things. Things. First of all, it needs to secure the supply for UK consumers and businesses over the coming winter. In the longer term, this has got to act as a spur to our transition to net zero, because uh, what the last few days has done is exposed our vulnerability to international gas prices on the spot market. And we've got a cross-party commitment for a transition to net zero over the coming decades. And this current hopefully short-term crisis should be a spur to get on with making sure that in the future our energy sources are renewable and sustainable and that we're not vulnerable to international price hikes like this. Apologies, um, Pat, your line is just cutting in and out, but we'll stick with it for the moment. Specifically on the CO2 um, production, though, um, many in the industry, the food industry, are urging the government to subsidise the production of, of, of CO2 because two thirds, I think, of, um, of, of those producers have had to close down. Is that something you want the government to do as well, to subsidise that, that production line? Well, uh, it seems to me we've got to maintain a, a supply and we've already got problems in the supply chain related to uh, both Brexit and COVID. And this is an added pressure. So it's really important that we keep up the CO2 supply for our food production because nobody wants to see even more shortages on supermarket shelves. Mm. Let's turn to the Labour Party. I'm sure you've seen the front page um, of The Times today. Rosie Duffield, uh, one of your colleagues, saying that she's too frightened to go to your uh, Labour Party conference because of the attacks that she's been subjected to because of her opinions on trans issues. Uh, she's she's more of the feminist side of the argument and she says she's been um, attacked. Um, and not only that, she's she says she no longer would advise women to go into politics. What's the leadership doing? about helping her? Well, I want Rosie Duffield to be able to go to conference. I want every MP to be able to go to conference. Uh, it's really important that in politics, people feel safe to express their opinions. So in the immediate sense, I really want Rosie, uh, who I know well and is a parliamentary colleague, to be able to come to our conference. But the bigger point here is the culture of politics and the way that we debate things. We've got to find a way of debating some sensitive issues, possibly disagreeing with them, possibly working through things without immediately descending into enemy camps with online abuse and online pylons and all of that kind of thing. It's a, uh, it, 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 you know, the, the fact that she feels that fear is symptomatic of a real cultural problem in politics right now. Pat, that, that cancel culture that, that, that you're talking about there seems to be a particular problem within the Labour Party. A recent poll uh, suggested 33% of Labour voters, and that's compared to 18% of uh, Tories, mm. say that they supported the idea of cancel culture, agreeing there should be consequences for those who say or do anything deemed hurtful to minorities. So it, how can the Labour Party persuade its supporters that cancelling people is not the way ahead? Well, as I said, you've got to be able to work through sensitive issues uh, without this sort of culture of the online pylon that we now have in politics. And I think looking ahead to Labour's conference, you know, that's got to underline that we are a changing party. We came off a terrible election result in 2019, the worst for over 80 years, and that underlines the need for change, change in our worldview, 
change in our policy programme and very much change in the culture uh, that exists within the party as well. And that's what voters will need to see before they will consider Labour as a better prospect in future. So we've got to show change and then we've got to put forward an appealing, uplifting offer for the future of the country. Those are the twin tasks facing us as we approach our conference. And Pat, the signals coming out of the leader's office certainly seem to be that he wants to take the party away from the Corbyn years, back towards more of a, a new Labour, a new, a more centrist approach. Certainly the personalities he's been putting in the, in the back office certainly are much more of a new new Labour type of people. And, and actually, there's new research out yesterday, opinion research, um, saying that 63% of the target voters in your most winnable 150 seats um, are so-called soft Tory voters. So that is the direction the party needs to go. But is it going to go there fast enough? Well, I don't know, but it is the direction. Um, I represent a West Midlands constituency, for example, uh, and the battles there are very much Labour conservative battles. Uh, so if we're going to make progress at the next election, it's a simple fact that we have to appeal to a number of voters who've been voting Conservative at recent elections. That is where the electoral battleground is. Uh, there's obviously a need for change after you've gone down to such a terrible defeat as we did in 2019. And to reaffirm the approach that we took in 2019 would just be to reaffirm failure. And but, we can't do that at a party conference. But th therefore, your leader is going to have to get much tougher on the likes uh, of Len McCuskey, who says that he's untrustworthy, of the left, who are saying they're going to overshadow the first day of the conference by um, forcing a row on Labour expulsions, by people wanting to see Corbyn back, you know, and, and by John McDonnell saying that um, hand over fist, hundreds of thousands of people are leaving the Labour Party. He's going to need to come down strong on that wing of the party. What can he do to persuade people that that's not still the tail wagging the dog? I think we need to lift ourselves above some of this, to be honest. The country's at a crossroads after the experience we've been through in the last 18 months. And the Labour Party's at a crossroads too after its longer experience of four election defeats. So, I hope that we see a conference that underlines the change that's needed uh, and that speaks to the country and says, you know, we are the party that will have the best post-COVID future for the United Kingdom. And some of those internal things that you're mentioning there are not of concern to voters. What they want to know is who's got the best plan to help the country recover from the experience we've all been through over the past 18 months.